Barry Sternlich joins us now. He opened the W Hotel in Manhattan's Union Square almost a decade ago when he was the CEO of Starwood Hotels. Yesterday, the property was in the news again. Dubai World, the investment company that can't pay its debts, speaking of debts, lost control of the W Union Square in an auction. It's as good an example as any of the risks in commercial real estate. Here to talk about those risks and the potential rewards they create for investors, Barry Sternlicht himself, CEO of Starwood Capital and Starwood Property Trust, the real estate investment company he took public in August. Barry, uh, let me ask you first, I guess I have to ask you about the W Union Square. <laughs> this is one of your old babies. Were you at all tempted to bid on that mezzanine debt? Uh, actually, we looked at it, but as, as the press sometimes doesn't get it quite right, there are about four Never. mortgages on the property, and the first is about $120 million. And it's securitized, it's in a commercial mortgage-backed security. And then there's three junior liens. The one that sold at auction was the fourth junior lien, and the value of the property is in the first junior lien. So, in other words... So this is a real speculative bet. Yeah, well, they owned the paper, so they've, it's called a credit bid. They basically bought their own paper back to get control of the asset, yeah. and now they'll have an option to restructure. But the, uh, this, the, the most junior mortgage is actually owned by an, uh, a German bank. Oh, goodness. And, All right. Uh, they, they don't want to fund it either, so this isn't, that story is going to keep going. <laughs> All right, let's move on talk about commercial real estate. We keep hearing about the collapse that's supposed to happen, the havoc it's supposed to wreak on banks and insurance companies and the broader economy. You're watching it. If it's a slow-motion train wreck, tell us, how bad is it right now? Oh, it's a slow-motion train wreck. You're exactly right. It's... Um, the, the markets are stuck, you know, the stuff is not trading and, and the banks don't have to take the losses that are in the mortgage portfolios that they have because the government just said, extend it, talk to the bar or do whatever you can, but don't take the hits. So, forbearance effectively. Forbearance. As long as you're talking to the borrower, the government just said that if the appraisal is below the value of the loan, it's okay, you don't have to take an impairment. They're trying to keep the bank's capital ratios in place and buoyed. And um, it's creating a lack of, uh, of trading of properties, especially these big buildings in New York where we're sitting or all over the country. And when there is an opportunity to buy something, if it's uh, fee-owned, if it doesn't have any debt on it, there's actually a lot of interest in it today because there's just so few transactions. So are we in this period of just sort of pretend and extend? Is that how it yeah, been, came up yes, with a good slogan? Pretend and extend. And, and you know, I described it yesterday at a conference I spoke at, that it's kind of like you're, you're on a skating, it's, you're on a, a lake that's got a little layer of frozen, it's frozen on top and people are dancing on top. And it's a question, is the lake going to get, the ice going to get really thick before too many people get on the lake before it collapses? I mean, there's a lot of problems in real estate. And, and if interest rates rise, you might see the cracks in the lake and everybody will fall through the ground and the banks will take huge losses. Or if, uh, if the economy gets f better fast enough, the ice will get thick and you'll have a lot of people dancing on the lake. And we won't see the trouble that people expect to see in the commercial real estate markets. If there's more trouble to come, where is do you that, think we're going to see it? Enough? <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> no, I think it's a nice analogy, frankly. Yeah. Uh, being a Canadian, you know, a skater, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, wh where is the next distress going to come? Well, the, for real estate players like ourselves, I mean, the, the one uh, seller there is, every weekend the government, the FDIC, takes back five or six banks. They took back seven, I think, this weekend. One of them had a large real estate portfolio. So for real estate players like ourselves that, that really buy distressed assets, the FDIC is a good seller. I mean, they are the only real seller of the, in the market. They're the clearinghouse. They've replaced the RTC from the 1990s. And uh, so we focus a lot of our attention there because you have a willing seller who will sell at the market clearing price, unlike the insurance companies and the banks who don't want opportunity funds like ourselves to earn 20 or 25 percent returns. They figure, why not? They'll just hold it. They don't have any cost of capital right now. So. Um, that's probably the, where you're seeing the opportunities.